Hello viewers, my name is Barbara Waters and welcome to this very special edition of Life of a Celebrity. Today we will be reviewing the life of actress, singer, dancer and model extraordinaire Marilyn Monroe. We will be interviewing important people from her career and even Marilyn herself. Stay tuned to find out the truth behind her death and even the story behind her famous blonde hair. You might know her from films like Gentlemen Prefer Blondes and How to Marry a Millionaire. Marilyn Monroe was a truly wonderful character, but what most of you might not know is that Marilyn Monroe didn't even start out as Marilyn Monroe. Let's take a look. Here with me today is Marilyn Monroe herself. She's going to tell us about her transition to her fabulous stage name. Let's begin. So Marilyn, how did you evolve into Marilyn Monroe and what exactly began your career? Well, Barbara, it's quite a long story, actually. I started off my whole career in the modeling industry, taking pictures for magazines such as Laugh, Peak, See, Glamorous Models, and Cheesecake. In July of 1946, I met with Ben Lyon and informed him of my modeling. He set up a screen test in color and had me walk down the street. A week later, Daryl Zanuck, who worked at Fox, reviewed the screen test and approved my film contract. I was paid $75. For my first, I, I was paid $75 a week for six months and had my first movie contract signed, which later sparked several other movie producers to use my charm and uniqueness for their films. When Lyne remembered an actress from the 1920s named Marilyn Miller, he thought Marilyn would much better suit me instead of drab old Norma Jean. Marilyn, your hair is such a beautiful color, but I know it wasn't always like that. Care to inform us on when and why you decided to go from your natural kinky brunette locks to your signature platinum blonde? It was actually for a modeling shoe for Rave Shampoo. I changed it in 1946. It was done by the fabulous staff at Frank and Joseph's Beauty Salon. It's beautiful, isn't it? Well, it sure was a good decision. Now, I hear you were an actress as well. Who produced your first major movies and what can we find you in? It was after I had landed several non-speaking roles, such as TV Extra, Background Dancer, Bit Parts, and Pantomime, that I got my first big break in 1952 with Monkey Business, produced by Sol C. Siegel. I had appeared in several other films before, such as Love Nest and Don't Bother to Knock, but with bad reviews from critics. You can also find me in my more popular pictures, such as Denim and Prefer Blondes and How to Marry a Millionaire. Incredible! Great number of awards in your lifetime, am I correct? Well, not to brag or anything, but I have won titles such as Miss Press Club, Best Young Box Office, Personality, Fastest Rising Star of 1952, Favorite Actress of 1953, Best Actress, Female World Film Favorite of 1961, and I am honored with my own star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. With all those awards, you must have had a lot of money to throw around. Did you donate any of your spare money to help any charities or major world disasters? I donated my time and money to WAVE, an organization that placed abandoned children in homes, the Arthritis and Rheumatism Foundation. Here I wrote a pink elephant. The Milk, found, the milk Fund for Babies and SANE, an organization dedicated to eliminating nuclear weapons. I took time out of my honeymoon with baseball player Joe DiMaggio to perform for three days for U.S. service members serving in Korea in 1954 and donated $1,000 to a children's welfare organization that gave free breakfast to underprivileged children. I visited an orphanage in Mexico and wrote a check for $1,000 while the press were there, and after they left, I tore it up and wrote a new one for $10,000. Well, thank you very much for being here, Marilyn. Thank you for having me. Fascinating, huh? Let's meet with Ben Lyon himself and see why Monroe was so special. Friends, now I have Ben Lyon with me. Ben. What did you see in Monroe that other women didn't have? Well, Monroe had a certain charm, a certain charisma. I just found her so naive and innocent. Her uniqueness really drove me towards the screen test. Well, that sure was interesting. Marilyn did mention Saul C. Siegel, the movie producer of her first movie, Monkey Business. So let us meet with him now to see how he felt about Monroe. Welcome, Saul. Thank you for being here. Hello. Now, I understand that you produce Monkey Business, a film that features Marilyn Monroe herself. Is this correct? Yes, that is correct. What kind of an impression on you did she make, and why did you decide to use her in your movie? I, myself, like many other directors at the time, saw a drive in Marilyn that proved she would stop at nothing to achieve her acting goal. Her attractive appearance also brought in good reviews from male viewers. Truly fascinating. Next question. Appro 
approximately how long did Monroe's career last? Marilyn went through countless numbers of films and photo shoots over a period of 16 years. That's a long time. Now, over those 16 years, did Marilyn Monroe's fame get to her head, causing her to do things she would later regret? The only thing that I know of that is appropriate for the viewer's age group is her lack of mental stability. By 1962, it became a big problem for her. She had most likely inherited her mother's paranoid schizophrenia, which had caused her mother to threaten a friend with a knife and sent her to a mental home. Marilyn depended on drugs and alcohol to keep her even semi-sane. She complained about hearing voices or being followed, even when that was not the case. Since childhood, she had feared rejection or any type of negative criticism, and when she did receive some, she took, pill she took pills in suicide attempt. Awful. Thank you for being here with us today, Mr. Siegel. No problem. Here with me, I have toxicologist Dr. Lee. Dr. Lee studies the amount of toxics or poisons in a human body. Welcome, doctor. For those of you that do not know, Marilyn Monroe was found dead at her home in Los, Ange Los Angeles, California, when she was only 36 years old. Her death has been a mystery for over 50 years now. Dr. Lee, we know we can't get a for sure answer, but what was the most logical explanation for Marilyn's death? Toxicology reports showed high levels of nembutrol and chloral hydrate in her bloodstream, pointing to suicide. This could be the case because although Monroe acted like the charismatic bodacious bombshell on camera, off camera she was a psychological mess. She had many self-confidence issues, but her family denied the option of suicide and claimed that she would never have taken her own life. Forensic pathologist Cyril Retched backed up their theory with the suspicion that Monroe might have been injected with poison, proving the murder route the correct answer. We can never know for sure though, and even after 50 years, her death still remains a mystery. Tragic it is. How did the public react to the mystery of her death? The public definitely missed their bodacious blonde bombshell, but they were mostly baffled by her mysterious disappearance. Many wondered, and still wonder to this day, what was the cause of her death? Thank you so much for your answers, Dr. Lee. Oh, no problem. Now it's time for the viewer's input. We asked you guys on Twitter, is Marilyn Monroe's work still remembered today? If so, is she remembered as a strong, re relatable woman or as a drug overdose celebrity? The conclusion we came to after reading your replies is that Monroe is remembered as the woman who transformed the black and white 50s to the Technicolor modern 60s. She had several people follow in her footsteps as far as what she represented, but none were up to Marilyn's level. Even to this day and time, people are still looking to her as a person and what she achieved. That concludes today's show. Be sure to tune in next time for more Life of a Celebrity.